Hello everybody and welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today I'm going to demonstrate a super easy fast and loose watercolor method. This is a great technique that you can add to your um, bag of tricks, to your repertoire, and it always just has really interesting fun results. So in front of me I have a quarter sheet of Stonehenge Aqua, 100% cotton, 140 pound cold press, I really recommend 100% cotton because I am just completely saturating this paper with water. And 100% cotton really holds up the best, I think, personally. Okay, so now that we have it saturated, what we're going to look at is essentially just doing a quick wet and wet, drying off, and then painting on top of that. So it's going to give us two effects. The wet and wet is going to be a nice soft background and then painting on the dry is going to give us a um, crisp sharp effect so there'll be those two things working together to give an interesting feel so we'll start out with a little bit of ultramarine i'm using a medium hake brush the ron ranson hake brush i'm just going to feed in my sky this will be an imaginary scene. You'll see how easy it is to put one together. We'll allow for some water down below. We'll grab a little bit of lizard crimson. I just put that out so it's nice and fresh. If we put above, I'm putting down below for a little reflection. Let's grab some raw sienna. And down to here. In fact, this method is so easy that, um, as I was about to turn on the camera, um, the cat Persephone, uh, Percy, jumped in my lap and I was ready to just do this demo with a cat in my lap painting around a cat. That's how easy it is. Okay, so left a little bit of white to the paper, which is totally fine. I have completely soft edges all the way around with everything. Um, at this point, I could put in a far background if I want, if I put, put in trees or um, hills or anything like that. I'm gonna grab some light red and some ultramarine. And that'll be my background color, let's see. We'll feed that in. A little bit too much ultramarine on there. With the wet and wet, you can really account for that and correct it by just adding and pushing it around. Yeah, you agree, Percy? And bring that down below. We'll uniform this background by bringing this all the way through. And then we'll get a little bit of variety by mixing concentrations of our light red oxide and ultramarine blue. Percy, do you want up in my lap? And with this, since I'm not, I don't live in a hilly area, I, um, we really don't have any mountains, so I really don't incorporate mountains too much in paintings. So I'll just let various shaped trees take place. And I'm gonna let this act as water down below. So we're just bringing those colors down for reflection. Then I'm gonna grab some burnt sienna on the brush bring my landmass 
and front. Okay, so just a very simple, basic composition. Everything's wet and wet. And you can play around in this stage as long as you want. However, I would recommend just um, at first, just uh, maybe setting a timer, just kind of um, giving yourself five to 10 minutes here, seeing what happens and seeing what you like. One thing you wanna be wary of, let me just grab some burnt umber on the brush, so I'll feed that in as well. One thing you wanna be wary of is that whenever you do a dry off, you can either allow the, um, the paint just to dry on its own, or if you use a bullet dryer, you're gonna to have to be careful because it will push the water and the um, pigment around, especially with how saturated we had put the paper. So um, just be aware of that. So what I'm gonna do now is pause the camera, I'm gonna do a dry off, and then we'll do our painting on top where we're gonna paint dry. So I used a blow dryer to uh, hasten the process. And um, as you can see, you can get different effects in that wet and wet stage. Uh, looks like uh, video wise, we just spent about five minutes of painting total in that stage where we had higher concentrations of pigment put in. It, excuse me, it has different effects. So play around in that stage and experiment. Now the next one, we're gonna put in our trees and we are going to pick up Percy and put her in our lap. Just don't jump on the palette, Percy. So I'm grabbing a mixture of burnt umber and ultramarine. I'm using a number four, um, number four rigger. You could use a number one, you could use the side of the hate brush. And you can see right away that this crisp, sharp brush and application creates a sense of distance between the background and the foreground between that softness and the harsh. The rigor brush or the script brush is just like really fantastic for also making these calligraphy type marks and it really lets your personal hand start to take place. I'm trying to not draw any perfect straight lines. I'm just letting it bounce and flick and flex on the paper. If I have my light source back here, I could bring my shadow back. And like I said, this is just a dark mix of ultramarine and burnt umber. Using the side of this guy for some texture. This is a brush stroke that's used in um, Japanese and Chinese painting, landscape painting. It'll kind of do a mark movement down. I think it's called the axe stroke. Okay. And we'll grab our medium hake. At this point, it doesn't have much water on it, so I can have it all crazy and splayed out. I can put in my foliage. There's some foliage down here. I always like to have the darker corners in a painting. It just kind of, um, for me, acts as a framing device. And I'm not changing anything on the brush. Uh, I'm just making sure that I'm not doing that stamping effect of having the same pattern over and over again, that I'm rotating the brush, I'm creating different textural marks.
Now, we can switch over to a smaller brush. This is the number one rigger. And we can do this for thinner twigs if we want, just because I don't have a light hand. Um, it's just easier for me to get thinner strokes with this brush than the number four. But I think if you're very um, high-handed and dexterous, you could probably get away with just using that one brush. Um, and Percy's holding this painting arm down. I don't know if that's showing up in the camera. <laughs> so, um, with these tutorials, you're more than welcome to follow along. You're more than welcome to sign your name to it. And if anybody ever says, hey, I like that painting, I'd love to buy it. You are more than welcome to sell anything that you do whenever you copy one of my tutorials. You have my express permission. I want you guys to be successful. And I want you all to be able to afford art supplies. And along that same note, please consider liking and subscribing. That really helps the growth of this channel. Um, always, you know, comment down below if there's ever anything you want me to address or if you have any ideas or concerns or whatever, whatnot. Um, and I also have a Patreon and other ways in which you can donate to the channel if you want to help um, support financially. I would greatly appreciate it, but simply watching, liking, and subscribing helps me out a lot. So thank you all. So we'll wrap up the painting at this. We'll sign our name somewhere on it. If we can find a pen, Percy, you're going to go find me a pen? There you go. I have a micron pen that I like to sign with. Maybe down here. I'll put a mat over it so you see what it looks like. And we will call it done. And this is just another easy technique you could add to your, um, like I said, repertoire. And you can spend as long as you want in that wet and wet phase. You can spend as long as you want on that dry phase at the end. You can really do a lot with it. So check it out. Like I said, um, if you do experiment with it and you experience difficulty, pay attention to the paper that you're using that might be causing some issues. And there you go. I hope you enjoyed and I'll talk to y'all soon. Bye.